Well, welcome to Cambry Baptist Church on this wonderful Sunday morning. My name's Alwyn Barry. I'm one of the pastors of Cambry Baptist Church in Cheltenham. I guess um, you'll be feeling a bit uneasy at the news of all the changes coming and what the days ahead will look like. Uh, but in Jesus, we have a rock on which we can stand, firm and unmovable, dependable and strong. I want you to listen to God speak through David in Psalm 138, words which will encourage our hearts in these days. He says this, I praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and I will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. Listen to this. You make me bold and stout-hearted. You know, we come this morning with security in his love and his salvation, uh, with certainty in his care for us, with boldness in his strength and with rest in his perfect plans. And, and so we can praise him together this morning. Uh, we're going to start by singing together, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. And we're going to lead straight into Behold Our God. Uh, I do encourage you to sing along where you are. And by doing so, what we're going to do is be joining together as a family of God in separate places, but together worshipping God and lifting our voices in praise to him. So let's praise him together this morning.
Good morning to everyone in our church family and please do join with us as we pray together now. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Amen. 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 Dear God, please can children go back to school and childcare soon. Please keep them safe. And we pray for those who are suffering. Please help them to trust you and comfort them. And Lord, we pray that we can see our church family again. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we are sorry for the things we have done wrong this week. We are sorry for the times when we have been unkind or impatient to the people we are spending this time with. We are sorry for when we have failed to trust your goodness and wisdom in the circumstances you've given to us. We are sorry for when we have responded with anger, with worry or with unbelief instead of trusting you. We are also sorry for many other things known only to you. Thank you that because of Jesus' work on the cross, we can be forgiven completely for all of our sins. Please help us to turn from our sins in true repentance. Thank you that your spirit teaches us to say no to ungodliness and yes to obedience. Please help us to listen to your voice this week. Amen. 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 And Heavenly Father, we thank you that even though we can't meet together in person, we have access to these services online. And we thank you for the encouragement of knowing that we do so together as your people, united in Christ. And we thank you that we can have peace in you, that we, you are sovereign and that you are still at work during this pandemic. Help us to fully trust you and keep turning to you as we face this challenging time. And Lord, as a church family, we're also thankful to see how you've been working in the lives of your people for the recovery and protection, for the answers to prayer, and for the encouragements that we've shared. Help us, Lord, to keep on growing in love and unity at this difficult time. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear God, force, hope, love, a Jewish house, of the chocolate. Amen. Well, we've been uh, meeting in small groups predominantly during this time of lockdown and uh, uh, and it's been great just to gather folk into small groups, but of course we have to meet differently than we normally meet. Uh, so I've got Alex and Colin and David here who are small group leaders, uh, or indeed Alex who's in charge of all the small groups as well uh, in the church, just to talk about some of the things that, that we've changed. Um, so now... Uh, Colin, first of all, if we can, uh, just uh, can you tell us um, how you've managed to, to meet as a small group in this time? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, we've taken advantage of uh, uh, technology, first of all, um, and uh, we've managed to get everyone logged into Zoom. Uh, so we're meeting virtually uh, over uh, video calls, uh, and that's been great. Some people have used it before, others hadn't. Uh, but I think we've all managed to uh, get with it and uh, yeah, it's working well for us. Good, good. And um, now David, I know you've got a, a, a somewhat older group, and it's, actually, it's actually quite a mixed age group really, but, but nonetheless there are older folk among them. Um, was, the, was the moving to, to kind of technology a big challenge for some or not? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, we had one or two needed a little bit of help, but pretty well everybody's managed to do it really well. And uh, I tend to put two, uh, two consecutive meetings to allow us to extend if we need to. And certainly have a bit of a competition to see who can log on to the second meeting the quickest. And <laughs> most of them are on very quickly. So yes, they're doing very well. Very, very good. Uh, Alex, now I know that not every group is able to meet quite like that. So have you heard of others no. who are doing things slightly differently? Yeah, so uh, at least one of the groups was beginning to do a, a WhatsApp um, Bible study. So they would uh, um, send out a passage a day or so before and, and get the people to sort of read from that. And then they would uh, have a time of prayer where you'd send in your requests again via WhatsApp. 
and and then ask for comments on the actual passage that have been sent out so and that would go on for maybe an hour hour and a half in terms of uh, uh, people sending messages and so forth and it was it's quite useful uh, um, in terms of just being able to understand some people's ideas and, and thoughts around the passage and things that were concerning them now um D david i'm coming back to you because um i know that you've had to not just kind of meet like this but your group has also had to provide help uh, for others now without talking about specific people is the, what's the kind of things that you've had to do for um for some others um well i mean mostly there's one one couple who we know well who uh, have needed some support um certainly by um telephone calls a number of us have uh, have called these people these folks up and a couple of us have um actually paid visits to help um so colin I, I, this, has it been difficult kind of with with all the lockdown all the rest of it um with this change or has 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 it been a, been a blessing to the group um there are two things that come to mind i think they've been a, in some ways a blessing um obviously we miss meeting people face to face but uh, the, the the first point i think is we're probably getting more people uh joining in um, we've got a, a kind of sort of relatively youngish group, but a lot of families with children. And I know sometimes it's hard to get out and, uh, and you know, people are sharing responsibilities. But the zoo, the, the, these virtual meetings have allowed more people to participate. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing, I think, is that I feel I've got to know people better. Um, the, the whole thing here is that only one person can speak at once. Um, <laughs> And actually, it makes things very focused. Uh, you, you know, very conscious when it's your turn to speak, but also you, you're listening to what others are saying. And I think listening into to people's lives and 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 perhaps learning more than you would have done otherwise has been really helpful. So I think I feel I I, I certainly getting to know people better, at least getting to know parts of their lives better. I, I, maybe you could think of of. Uh... Uh, of just one thing that, that you think well this is what we really need to be praying for for um your small group and for small groups in, in particular at this time so so david if i could start with you when we, when we met pretty well everybody involved with the small group when we met physically have attended um and, and a few extras in fact um but i have also extended the invitation to the members of the care group and at least one of them has joined in uh, in contact with one of the others. But I suppose specifically, uh, I'd be concerned about members of the care group who maybe weren't attending for whatever reason. Thank you, um, Colin. Uh, yeah. So um, my mind's been very much on on families. I think uh, families are finding they're under you know, increasing pressure, trying to balance homeschooling, especially when the children are younger, they're not independent yet. So they, they, they really need their parents there. And I think then with work being, uh, you know, stressful and, and people trying to, to cover various things at once, I think, you know, the, definitely families are, are feeling the pressure. And so very would like to pray for, for families who um, are really trying to balance things. And with work pressures coming as well, we've got people who have, uh, their own businesses we've got people who may be furloughed and you know i think there are other added pressures at the moment whether it be you know financial or you know just trying to keep themselves going um thank you thank you colin uh, and alex just to wrap up it's the people that aren't able to interact with the groups very easily that uh, do concern me those people that don't have uh, technology that uh, uh, we need to sort of hold up in prayer that they are not regularly communicated with this as maybe uh, many others are yeah thank you thank you ever so much thank you all of you as well um for for taking this time and and uh, and as we uh, think about our, our small groups and the care groups in the church can i just really encourage everyone uh, to pray constantly for one another uh, during this time as the lockdown is going to continue for quite some time yet um that god would really bless us as a church together thank you you know, the children of the church have also um, been continuing to do things differently at this time and, and they've been receiving activities to do with their parents during this time of lockdown. And we're going to hear more about some of the things that they have been doing now. Good morning, everyone. The last couple of months have been a time of enforced and unwelcome change. 
But through it all, the truth is that we know the one who never changes. Glow, our work with the under 11s in Cambrai, has had to change. But the God we share with the children will never change. Our focus has had to change as we now aim to support families through this time, to equip and encourage them to worship and learn as families and to develop links through fun activities and group challenges. This may seem like change to us, but again, these verses remind us that our families were always designed to be a place where our Christian faith would be lived out and taught to our children. Here are some photos of some of the things we've been getting up to over the weeks. Facebook has been a hub of activity as our team has worked together to provide activities throughout the week. Monday has become Music Monday, a chance to share a song to listen to, sing along with or even dance to. Wednesday is now Work It Out Wednesday, a day when we have a word search or code breaker or something similar to try and solve. Friday is our virtual glow club. We've had some workshops, ideas for activities families can do at home, as well as the Friday Family Challenge, where prizes have been won for a huge variety of challenges. Sunday is our time to focus on a particular Bible passage or story, to learn together what God is saying to us. We also have a song and a prayer activity for families to engage with together. We've tried to stay in touch with families who come to any of our activities, Sunday or midweek. Our Glow Tots families have all been written to and are able to stay connected through Facebook too. It's not easy. We miss the direct contact with the children and it's not easy for all of them to engage online. But we know that God has them all in his hands and we can trust him during this time. Please pray for our children and families in all they are now having to adapt to and for God's protection over them through this time. Pray for our teams that we stay strong and find different ways we can engage the children and families and encourage them together. Pray that in it all, God will be glorified and children and families will continue to grow in him. You came from heaven to us to show the world from the earth to the cross. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. John chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, the wedding at Cana. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this he went to, down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. There's no wine, it's a disaster! Why did you ask me? Just do what he tells you to do. Fill this with water.
Now give it to the groom. That's one. Well, some weddings you remember more than others, don't you? Uh, some you remember for all the right reasons, you know, a wonderful couple, a beautiful day, wonderful dress, whatever it might be. But some you remember for all the wrong reasons, like a reception I went to once, which was set romantically in a field uh, full of marquees. Uh, but sadly, the wasps liked the marquees and the smell of food too. They came in in their droves. One table counted over 100 wasps slain at their table during the reception. It was a memorable wedding. Uh, but this wedding that we've read about uh, is unusual. It was remembered, but look at what it was remembered for. Is there any mention there of the bride? Uh, what did she wear? Uh, who was she even? We're not told. Uh, there's only passion passing mention even of the groom. Nothing about the speeches, nothing really about the wedding either. But you see, that's the point. What is the important detail in this wedding? Well, look at verse 11. We're told there that he, Jesus, thus revealed his glory and that his disciples put their faith in him. What's important about this wedding? It's that Jesus revealed his glory. You know, the important thing wasn't the wedding, it wasn't the wine, it wasn't even the miracle. In actual fact, the Greek word for miracle uh, that's used in the Bible is actually emphasises the idea of not power, but of a sign. You see, all miracles in scriptures are really signs. They're miracles which reveal God from the miracle of creation, for example. He reveals his power and that he always makes all things good. In the miracle of the flood, for example, he reveals his hatred of sin and his righteous judgment and his desire to save. In the miracle of the Passover, for a third example, he reveals his provision of a sacrifice in order to bring life to set free. See, all of these things reveal God's glory and the important thing is of what the miracle says about Jesus about how it reveals his glory and this is the most important thing throughout this book of John the whole book you see we've already seen is written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and by believing you might have life in his name that's what we're told in John chapter 20 and verse 31 and we need that so much. We need to see who Jesus is so that we can believe in him. These days, more than ever, we need to remind ourselves of his person, of his power, of his authority, of his love, of his sacrifice, of his victory. Don't look at the wedding here. Don't look at the wine, but look at Jesus and we will see that he is far better. First of all, we'll see that he's the best answer in verses one to five of our passage. I wonder if you've ever invited guests to your house and they turn up for a meal with loads of others who you didn't expect. Uh, what, what do you do then? Well, you frantically look in the cupboard for the lentils to pad out the casserole, don't you? Or, or extra potatoes to pad out the vegetables. Uh, but this was worse, an Eastern wedding with huge numbers of guests. Many had travelled a long way on foot and they, they can't go home. They can't go down to a local shop. There's no Lidl's around the corner for them to go to. Uh, and they've run out of wine. That's a staple. This is what they normally drank all the time. So what do you do? This was a disaster. Now, I want you to get the scene here because it's important. None of the guests yet know about the problem. By, by verse 10, they just think that the owner has finally bought out the, the good wine. But in verse 1 and 2 of this passage, where we are at the moment, they don't yet know that there is no more wine. But behind the scenes, there's panic. And this is the big picture for us. We're meant to get this picture. Uh, you know, when you go to an art gallery, we can look at the pictures, but we're meant to see the meaning behind them, aren't we? And the point is this, that we are in the same situation. What is our problem? Well, the problem in my life is my sin. It's the things I do every day that separate me from God. I wonder if you ever feel lonely. I I'm sure you do. But we weren't made to feel lonely, were we? God made us to be in perfect, intimate, totally fulfilling relationship with him. But our sins have separated us from our God. And so our loneliness demonstrates something's wrong. Uh, do you feel hurt? Well, sometimes it's because of the wrong that others have done to you. Sometimes it's because you've done wrong to others as well. It's because of this sin problem in our hearts and lives. 
or you're suffering, well, even if it's back pain or, or something like that, isn't it because this broken world is decaying and we're decaying with it? The world is scarred by sin. You see, the current pandemic even is evidence of a fallen world. It's not just out there, but, but that fallenness is in here, lives full of regret and lives full of shame because of sin. And it's a terrible problem that really spoils the party. And yet, like these party guests, we just don't see it. But notice what Mary does. She comes discreetly to Jesus and says quietly to him, they have no more wine, as you see it in verse 3. Why does she do this? Why go to Jesus? Well, well it's not that Jesus has a, a load of burly men with him who could go down to Littles and pick up the wine. That's not the idea. It was far, far more. We're told in Luke in chapter 2, verse 51, that Mary, when she heard the good news of the Messiah that was going to be born through her, stored up these things in her heart. She knew who Jesus was. She knew that Jesus is going to be the answer to all our needs. And so she turns to Jesus. And you see, this day, in this difficulty we're in, Jesus is still the answer. The answer to our greatest needs. Not even, not merely running out of drink. And that's what Jesus was telling her in verse 4. He said to her, my hour has not yet come. He uses that phrase throughout his ministry until finally his hour did come when he was going to be nailed to the cross to take away the punishment for your sin and mine. You know, he came to deal with the problem of this sin, the problem that we and I have. And he deals with that heart problem. And when he deals with that problem, he deals with all our other problems as well. What is the answer to the problems that we face? It's the same as the answer Mary gave here in verse 5. She said, do whatever he tells you to do. Jesus is the answer. And Jesus is the only answer to all our difficulties, our sin, and also the problems that come in our life and from the world around. So we see that Jesus is the best answer, but not only that, that he's the one who provides the best cleansing, a complete cleansing in verse 6 to 7. I don't know what you would have thought of doing in a situation like Jesus found himself, but, but I bet you wouldn't do this. Uh, there were six very large stone containers. They were huge, actually. We don't get a sense of it, really, by just reading it. But verse 6 tells us they each held 20 to 30 gallons. Now, just for, uh, just for a comparison, your a average petrol tank in your car holds about 11 gallons uh, and Jesus said take each one of these massive jar stone jars and fill each of these jars to the brim with water that was a huge effort uh, you, especially when you don't have taps handy there had been a lot of running between wells with buckets to, to fill these massive jars up with water but again here there's another picture this story is full of pictures that we're meant to get what kind of jars were they beyond huge that we see? Well, look in verse 6. They were used for ceremonial washing, we're told. They were used to hold the water that was needed to obey all the laws that were given for washing and cleansing before meals. Before each meal, they had to obey God's law and to keep pure, they had to wash. And so they needed a lot of water because there's lots of meals and they needed to come time and time again before each meal. Keep on coming back for that cleansing to be purified again. What was the answer to sin in God's law, that Old Testament law that they were obeying? Well, it always involved that kind of huge effort because the problem of sin is so huge. They had to keep on bringing sacrifices and they had to keep on coming back. And, and one was never enough, two was never enough, more were never enough. They, they had to keep on coming. They had to keep the feast days for days and days. They had to keep doing it because the, the sin problem was so big. They had to keep on washing and they had to keep on doing it because the sin problem was so big. You see, it was a huge effort and it was never ending and it was never enough not all the bloods of bulls and goats we're told can take away sin i was reading in a blog this week and it was a young man in seattle he had been a shop worker he was no one special and he wasn't particularly bad either nor obviously good but on the blog he simply said this i've realized i am too bad for god you know he's right I am too bad for God. We're all too bad for God. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you see, Jesus is here. And that makes all the difference. Do you remember what John the Baptist said about him? As we saw last week, it's back there in, in chapter 1 and verse 29. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. What does he do? He takes away the sin of the world. We have to put a huge effort in and we only fail miserably. 
we can't deal with it but he is able to deal with our sin that's what he does and so notice what Jesus does here he gets them to fill those jars with water and not just uh, a bit full but did you notice it's right to the brim they fill them right to the very top there's nothing more can be added and then what does he do every last bit of that water is replaced by the very best wine they have ever tasted now, now do you get the picture all the water that's there for cleansing but actually does nothing every last drop all of it right up to the brim nothing can be added was replaced by the finest wine and that's what Jesus did when he died for you he took every bit of all that was needed to be done to deal with your sin problem which you can't do for yourself and he paid for it all in his blood which is poured out for you there's nothing that can be added. He's done it all. Jesus has paid the whole price, everything that I owe to him. And that's glorious, isn't it? There's nothing more that I can do. All that I need to deal with my sin, to cleanse my conscience, to transform my life is found in Jesus. There is complete cleansing found in him. So Jesus offers complete cleansing. But, but more than that, he offers us new life, the, the best life. Uh, verse 8 to 10. Look at me with me to verse 8. You can see that there were these jars, they were full to the brim. Uh, and, but all that anybody around had seen happen was that they had been filled with water. What does Jesus say in verse 8? He says, now draw some of that water out and take it to the master of the banquet. Can you imagine being one of those servants? You, you want me to do what? You want me to take water to the master of the banquet who's panicking because there's no wine and you want me to pretend that it's fine wine? This is going to cost me my job. You know, it sounds absolutely crazy thing to ask, doesn't it? You know, the biggest hurdle to coming to know sins forgiven isn't the realisation of sin. We, we all know we've done wrong, but it's pride. I remember talking to a woman, delightful and devout, very religious. She had no problem understanding her sin. But the idea that Jesus had done everything for her, the idea that she just needed to ask Jesus for forgiveness and accept that Jesus, all that Jesus had done for her, that was preposterous to her. She had to do something. I've got to do something for myself. And you see, that's the stumbling block. You must take that step of faith. You must ask, you must act on what Jesus asked you to do. You must act on what Jesus has done. In Ireland, there's a, in the north of Ireland, there's a rope bridge. I've talked about it before in church. It's not made of rope, actually, but of steel rope. And uh, it bridges a big drop between a cliff face and a small island close to the shore. And to look of it, you think it will hold you. It should do because it's steel rope. Uh, and I guess you believe it as well. But you wouldn't believe how many people stand away and refuse to go over that bridge because it doesn't look like it will hold you, even though it certainly will. But if you don't step out, you never experience the joy of crossing that bridge and looking at that great distance below and the bridge holding you up. And that's the same here. Look what happens when this poor trembling servant served the cup to the head waiter. Look at verse 10. You have saved the best till last, he said. Do you get that? You have saved the best till now. What do you need to know this morning? You need to know this, that Jesus is infinitely better. Do you know that? Have you come to know him dealing with your sin? Do you know his cleansing in your life? If you haven't done so, then you need to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour this morning to take that step. And, and believers, do you know the reality of God's best in your life? You know, Jesus came to give life in all its fullness, life to the max. But so often we don't experience it because we don't turn to him as we ought to do. But his life is far better. He, he brings new life. I wonder if you know it. Have you been delivered from fear and anxiety as you turn to trust in Jesus Christ? This is a wonderful story, isn't it? It's a glorious story. Jesus reveals his glory. What's the glory of Jesus revealed? That he came to be our best answer. He came to bring the best cleansing. He came to bring the best life that is able to deal completely and totally and perfectly with our emptiness. You know, there's one big failure in this story. It's the bridegroom. He was the one who should have provided for the guests, isn't it? He's failed spectacularly. What a disaster. Uh, and when we look at our lives, we are just like that bridegroom. 
we're given these lives to live, but actually in reality it's a disaster. We fail spectacularly. But Jesus turns a disaster into triumph. Do you realise how much wine there was? 180 gallons of wine. He gave them more than enough that they needed, more and with plenty to spare. And that's what Jesus does. He doesn't just meet our need. He meets our need with more to spare. He can deal with the disaster of our lives. It doesn't matter how far you are from him. It doesn't matter how bad you are or how much you failed. It doesn't matter uh, how, how awful you are. No one is too bad. No one has messed up too much. There is no one whose life is too spoiled. And once you come to know him, there is no circumstance that's too big, no difficulty too hard, no problem too difficult for him to sort out. You know, these things are written with one purpose in mind, that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God and by, by believing you might have life in his name. I wonder, do you believe? Maybe for the first time you need to come and trust him to say, yes, forgive me for all the sins I've done. Cleanse me from them and give me this new life that I need in Jesus. Or, or, or maybe uh, as a believer, you need to come back and say, yes, Lord, I want this abundant life that you can give me. No longer a slave to fear, no longer a slave to anxiety, no longer a slave to worry, no longer a slave in my life because you have new life to give. And so we praise God that Jesus is better. He's the one who provides the cleansing that we need. He's the one who provides new life for us. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters, His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust in You, and I will trust in You.
can trust Jesus completely, can't we? What a saviour. He's done it all and we don't need to look anywhere else but to him for all of our needs. I, I do hope that God has challenged you to trust and rest in Jesus all the more in this difficult time. If you want to respond by praying with others, we do have a prayer ministry team on standby to pray with you right now. To contact them, just use this uh, email address uh, or the phone number that's appeared on the church email news that you've already been sent. Uh, they're ready and waiting for you to call right now and would love to hear from you. Many of our small groups will continue to meet this week. They, they're a vital point of contact during this time of lockdown and they're central to our spiritual growth as a church so do go and find how your small group or the small group that's connected to you, the care group that you've been put in is meeting and do join with them. It's been a privilege to have more people join small groups at this time. We also have various prayer gatherings, including a whole church prayer meeting. It's only for 20 minutes on Thursday from 7.30 um, and we finish in time to join with others and applauding our NHS and care and key workers. These Zoom meeting details are available in the weekly news email. Two dates for your diary now. Uh, from the 29th of May, we're going to start a Life Explore course on Friday evenings from 8 until 9 or thereabouts via Zoom. Uh, we would love you, if you're interested in just finding out what it's about or somebody who knows who you know who wants to find out more about uh, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to join us. So do look out for further details on the church website or on our first Facebook page and in the news seat and do encourage folk to sign up for that. Uh, we had a great quiz a few weeks back and uh, we're going to do another church quiz together on Saturday the 30th of May. Um, we can have up to 100 different computers or phones connecting to Zoom so there's plenty of space to join us. So do put 7pm in your diary for a 7.15 start for Saturday the 30th of May and invite neighbours and colleagues and family and friends to join in with that quiz together. Now there's lots of other church news and prayer news and details of all our activities including youth and children's work in the weekly church email you should have already received. Do read through it and join us where you can and if you haven't received it do let the office know so we can get you on that mailing list. Finally, after this premiere at 11.30, we have a Zoom video conference church gathering. This week, we're going to share a bit of time around communion together. So bring along a little bit of bread uh, and a little bit of, of something like wine or um, maybe it's some, some juice or something like that. So that together we can share communion for just a, uh, about 10 minutes or so and then we can pray together. We'd love you to join us during that meeting and the meeting ID for that uh, will appear now. Do can you continue to pray through the week uh, for one another and for the work of the church. And we're going to close now in worship by hearing a song that, that's new to us in the church, but which has amazing words. And I think will become a real blessing to us in the church as we go ahead, not only in these days, but after lockdown is finished. So let's listen to, and as you pick up the, the tune and the song, let's sing along to this song entitled King of Kings. Oh 